So the new variable that we've created is called GW INST transform file. That just says, so inside of that install.bat file, we're looking for this variable just to give us the path and location. If you do not give a path, it assumes the same uh, folder where the groupwise MSI, and that's where we've actually put the file. So it's in that uh, C colon GW client win32. So here I just need to type the name, right, groupwise.mst. Right, and I select OK. We're going to add a second variable. The second variable is actually used for doing upgrades of previous version clients. This will allow us to uh, make changes to existing MSI installs. Uh, the way Microsoft works is that if you do an MSI install, you cannot make any changes to it. Uh, if you do an upgrade, it only it respects the initial install. So in this case here, we want to do things like remove icons from desktop and remove icons from quick launch and those kind of things. So this would allow us to uh, get rid of those things by doing that. So we also have a new one. So it's GW INST um, remove MSI. Right? And the value for this we want to type is true. So if the value is true, it goes ahead and allows us to remove the previous MSI install and allows us to install the new groupwise MSI and then allow us to apply the MST. So I'm going to select OK. Again on here, I'm going to select the advance. At this one here, I do want to wait for the action to complete before moving on. And obviously, I do want to do the install as dynamic administrator. If you're doing a clean install, you definitely need to have administrator register to the box because we are going to write to the registry. Uh, if you were doing upgrades, the minimum requirements would be power user uh, since the uh, uh, entries are already there. But I would still do this as dynamic administrator. So I'm going to wait for the actions to complete. I'm going to run as dynamic administrator. And I'm going to select OK. So these are the install actions, the minimum install actions required. You can dress this up. You can add prompts for the users so that they get prompts and they uh, get those kind of things. Um, we're just going to do the bare minimum at this point, allowing you to dress it up as you see fit. Now, what I want to do is with the icon that's going to be used for distribution for installation, I also want to use the same icon for launching. So that means I need to go here and create a launch action. So I select the launch tab. I'm going to add a launch. And again, it's just a launch executable. And at this point, what is the name of the executable? It's going to exist in C colon backslash program files. And again, if it's a 32-bit, it'll be program files. If it's a 64-bit, it'll end up in program files x86. So we might have to have some uh, requirements here for launching, uh, testing for where is the groupwise file. Again, well, um, easy enough to work out using the requirements just to say if the file exists in this directory, um, then go on. If it doesn't exist, you just say continue on to the next action. The next action would be launch um, the, uh, the, the next version of it in the other directory. Uh, again, it goes into groupwise. Oops, sorry, it does not go to groupwise first. It goes to novel first. Novel backslash groupwise and the file name is grpwise.exe. Now here, you can add command line parameters. One I like to add is a slash at you dash question mark. So that just always means always show me the, um, uh, the login dialog box. Don't assume the user who's logged into the local machine. That assumes that you're also logged into eDirectory. Uh, so we really don't like to do that anymore, or I don't. And a slash IPA dash mail dot digital airlines dot com. This just says, you know, populate the IP address or the DNS name of where the post office is. Um, again, I only have the one post office, so I don't mind doing this. If you have multiple post offices, obviously you probably don't want to do this. Uh, again, but you can create uh, different applications for different groups, which are assigned to different post offices. So you can pre-populate this information for them. And again, the slash IPP uh, 1677 is for the port. Again, these are totally optional. I just like to put them in. If I select on the advanced, 
here I don't need to wait for next action because there is no next action and this one I want to run it as the logged in user and display is normal because I now I'm just the regular user running the application I don't need to be administrator so I select OK and I'm going to apply my changes so now I've got my bundle built now I did say I want to have ZCM control the dialog box for installation so to do that I need to go to the summary page I'm going to just scroll down and here where it says show activity it's defaulted to no I'm going to change that to yes so now what that means is ZCM will deliver a dialog box to the desktop saying uh, it's either downloading when it's distributing and downloading the files to the ZCM cache on the local machine and it'll go to installing once it's actually doing the entire install process and now the only thing left to do is to publish this application so I publish the application I publish it as a new version and we'll see now we we'll go f to a published now it's ready the only thing left now again would be to um, associate this application with my uh, devices I have and in my devices I have a Windows XP workstation that has no groupwise client and I have a Windows 7 box that has a uh, groupwise 8 client on so I'll demonstrate both uh, so first let me go to relationships and let's go our, add our device assignments and let's add our Windows XP workstation select it where do I want the icon to appear so I want in the application window I want on the desktop I want it perhaps on the start menu um, on the quick launch bar allow me to put in all those uh, spots I'll select next when do I want the distribution to happen so I can create a distribution schedule at this point I'll, I'll just distribute it immediately so I'll say next my distribution schedule I want it to actually start right now I want it to install once it's distributed I want the installation to happen right away and I want it to launch immediately so distribute it and launch the application right away so we'll select next and we'll select finish and now I've got my distribution I'm gonna switch over to my Windows XP workstation and we'll see that the agent is already refreshing because I did the distribute now so it got notification from the server that it's uh, going to distribute to that box so it's going to refresh and we will eventually see the icon appear on the desktop and here's our dialog box for downloading of the files and there's the icon appearing on the desktop so this installation will now take approximately um, five to ten minutes to do the actual client install so we'll uh, we'll just pause our timer here and we'll come back once we're we're done here we see the application files downloading and notice the icon on the desktop is the down arrow so it just means it's downloading and it's caching the files locally and now we'll see that it's changed from install uh, from downloading the application to installing the application and notice the icon on the uh, desktop the little arrow is now this green arrow for installing so again this will take anywhere between five to ten minutes And once it disappears, the client should launch momentarily. And the client launches. It has on the address line the IP address or the DNS name that we put in in the port and I just need to log in now as a user Mary Jones <clears throat> and we connect to the post office so we've successfully installed groupwise on a workstation that did not have groupwise 
Uh, we've got the icon on the desktop, icon on the quick launch, and if you go to the start menu under applications, we'll have the icon there as well. So let's check and do a upgrade on a Windows 7 box running GroupWise 8. So we launch, we'll notice that it's a GroupWise 8 dialog box. This is a GroupWise 8 icon. GroupWise 8 launch dialog box comes up. We'll just cancel out of the login. And we'll now go back to our administrative and we'll go to our relationships and we'll now add the device, the Windows 7 workstation to that. We want it on the desktop. Um, there is no way to pin the icon uh, from within uh, group wise um, to the uh, taskbar within Windows 7. So the quick launch only applies to Windows XP. Uh, I want them in the start menu. We'll select next. Again, our distribution schedule, next. And uh, now, and install immediately and launch immediately. We'll select next, finish that off. Now we have our both relationships. Go to our Windows 7, we should see the icon uh, for the Windows 7 box should momentarily refresh. It's refreshing. There it goes. And again, we will shortly get the dialog boxes for the install. Or for the downloading and caching, and then the installation of the application. And here we have the dialog box for the installation and downloading of GroupWise application. We'll return once it's installed. And we'll notice that we now have the both GroupWise 8 icon and the ZCM delivered GroupWise 2012 icon. Eventually the GroupWise 8 icon will disappear and leaving us only with the GroupWise 2012. Notice now that the GroupWise 8 icon has disappeared. It means it's removing the old GroupWise 8 client. And finally, the GroupWise 2012 client has appeared. It has the previous login from the previous user. And again, I'll just log in. And we successfully now have the GroupWise 2012 Windows client. So you see we successfully deployed to a fresh machine and we've also deployed uh, to a box with GroupWise 8 uh, and successfully upgrading that, uh, that workstation to GroupWise 2012. And this completes our video demonstration on how to deploy GroupWise 2012 client with ZCM 11 SP1. Thank you.